Hello dear friends, in trick number 218, today we are going to learn some facts about squares and square roots. Now these are some important facts which are quite often used in competitive exams and knowledge of these facts will enable you to solve a lot of problems relating to these important concepts already. Okay, now the first thing, see whenever we have a even number like 2, 4, 6, 8. If you take the square of this even number, the answer will always be even. So even numbers have even squares. Like you see 4 square, 4 is even. So 4 square is 16, 16 is also even. A even number cannot have a odd square number. Similarly, if you have an odd number and you try to square that number, then you will get an odd number always. Like the square of 13. 13 is an odd number. If you square this, you will get 169, which is again odd. The next important fact about squares is, suppose in any number, you have a 2 or a 3 or a 7 or a 8 in the units place. Any number having these 4 digits, any of these 4 digits as the units place will never be a perfect square. Never a perfect square. So, you can judge by just observing the number whether it may be or may not be a perfect square. So, for example, suppose you have 3, 1, 4, 3, 7. You can very easily say that this is not the square of any natural number. So, it is not a perfect square. Why? Because it contains 7 in the units place. It does not mean that containing a 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 or 9 will make the number a perfect square. If there is a 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, 9 out of this, if there is the unit place contains one of these dig digits, then the number may or may not be a perfect square. So, like you have suppose 256. Now 256 contains 6 in the units place. So, you can judge that this may be a perfect square. So, this is 16 square. But if you take 216, then it is not a perfect square still it contains 6. So, it may or may not be a perfect square if the unit digit is either 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 or 9. But certainly, if it contains the unit place as 2, 3, 7 or 8, then it is never a perfect square. Now, uh, suppose we have a number of zeros in any number. Now, see, suppose this is a number containing two zeros. Now, if a number contains even number of zeros, then even number of zeros. The number has to terminate with even number of zeros, either two zeros or four zeros or six zeros like wise. So, if there are even number of zeros, again the number may or may not be a perfect square. Again, another condition for number may or may not being a perfect square, it contains even number of zeros. Now see, 300 is definitely not a perfect square, but if you see 1600, again two zeros, so even number of zeros, now it is a perfect square, it is the square of 40. But if the number contains odd number of zeros, 
so in case the number contains odd number of zeros then it is definitely not a perfect square never a perfect square so now you can very easily judge whether a number is a perfect square or not suppose we have three followed by five zeros now if there are five zeros these are the odd number of zeros five zeros so it is never a perfect square so whenever a number a number contains a number of zeros then you have to count the number of zeros if it is odd number of zeros then you can very easily judge that it can never be a perfect square but if it contains even number of zeros then you can test the remaining number that is 3 3 is not a perfect square so it is 300 is also not a perfect square but here you have 16 16 is a uh, perfect square number that uh, the square of 4 so it is a perfect square so only those numbers which contain even number of zeros they can be perfect squares now <clears throat> we come to another important property let me just rub this off the first property here now this property is again relating to square of any number now see square of a natural number we have 9 square now see 9 square is 81 so whenever you have the square of a natural number this number will will either be divisible by 3 or divisible by 4 or leave the remainder 1 1 only when divided by 3 or 4 now see another particular property of squares now see 9 square is 81 so 81 is divisible by 3 so it falls in this category but if you take some other square say i am taking 14 square 14 square is 196 and if you test this 9 plus 1 10 10 plus 6 16 so 16 is not divisible by 3 so this number is not divisible by 3 so you can check the divisibility by 4 now so if you check the divisibility by 4 4 4 16 so 36 Four nine zero thirty six. So this number is divisible by four. So whatever perfect square number you are taking, that number will either be divisible by three or divisible by four. Or there is a third condition: it leaves remainder one when divided by three or when divided by four. Now see another example. Say we have seven square. Now seven square is forty nine. Now forty nine is not divisible by three. Forty nine is not divisible by four. But when you divide this by three, it leaves remainder one because forty eight is divisible by three, so one will be the remainder. Similarly, if you divide this by four, twelve will be the quotient and one will be the remainder. So remainder. on dividing this number perfect square number by 3 or 4 the remainder can only be 1 so a remainder of 2 cannot be achieved through division by 3 or 4 if you divide a perfect number by these two numbers then remainder can only be 1 so this is another very important property of squares now see yet another important property now how many digits does a perfect square root contain now suppose you have a number in the square root which is even or number in the square root which is odd now whenever the number of digits even number of digits this is number of digits so within the square root you have a number in which the number of digits is 2 4 6 8 or 1 3 5 7 so in these cases you can find out the number of digits in the square root of the number now see whenever you have even number of digits 
then just divide the number of digits by 2 you will get this is the number of digits in square root number of digits in square root but obviously you cannot divide a number by 2 if it is odd so that will be in decimals so what you do if that number of digits in the square root number is odd you just add 1 to this and divide it by 2 this will give you the number of digits in the square root so if you want to know how many digits will it will it contain you can draw a table and you can remember this result like this suppose in the perfect square number this number there are one or two digits so this number inside the square root contains either one digit or two digits then the square root of that number will contain only one digit similarly you can take the next two numbers so one or two is already done now if you take three or four digits in the square root number number in the square root so you get two digits in the answer that is the square root answer will contain only two digits now you can carry on this procedure so one two three four five or six digits so whenever a number contains five or six digits then the square root will contain three digits seven or eight digits the square root will contain four digits and obviously you don't need more of these examples because such large number square roots are never asked in competitive exams so up to eight you can remember in pairs so first one or two digits one digit in the square root three or four two digits five or six three digits and seven or eight four digits now for an example just check c2 i am taking a two digit number now and any two digit number suppose square root of 64 it is 8 so whenever it contains two digits here two digits then answer will contain one digit now take an example of three or four digits say square root of uh, you can take uh, odd number of digits now say 169 now here we have three digits three digits so answer will contain two digits the answer is 13 two digits similarly you can have five or six uh, places now you can take examples and find out that any five digits perfect square number the answer will be a three digit number and any perfect square number containing eight digits will have answer as a four digit number so these are some very important properties of squares and square roots you can learn these and practice them for success in competitive exams so keep learning keep subscribing the channel and share the videos if you like it